Amen, amen. Good to see you today, Sister Sheila. God bless you, sister. Amen. Galatians chapter number three, if you would turn there with me, please, as we continue in our series, The Blessing of Abraham. This is part 27 today that we're doing, part 27 of The Blessing of Abraham. And uh, we're going to read Galatians chapter number three, uh, verse Verses 13, 14, and then we're going to drop down to verse number 29. And I want, want us to read it in unison again today. And the reason why I want us to do that, because I want you to get that word in your spirit. I want you to know that you are blessed. You're not cursed. Jesus became a curse for you. Amen. When you get there, say amen. Anybody need time? Let's read verse 13 and 14 together and then verse 29. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Verse 29. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Romans chapter number 8. We're going to read verse 16 and 17 over there. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. When you get there, say amen. amen. Anybody need time? Somebody need time? Got it? All right. Let's read verse 16 and 17 together. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Amen. All right, now last week in our study, we began to look at, uh, we, we continued rather looking at walking in the blessings of Abraham. And we stated that, uh, we, we talked about this 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. That's where we're going next. The love chapter, the evidence of faith. The evidence of faith, all right? And we say to that if we're going to walk in the blessings of Abraham, that we must understand that we must walk in love. According to Galatians 5 and 6, the Apostle Paul wrote and he said that faith works by love. Faith works by love. All right, so Paul described for us in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 13 what love is. And what it is not, in verses 1 through 3, Paul dealt with the superiority of love and how love is worth more than proclamation, is worth more than prophecy, is worth more than perception, is worth more than philosophy, worth more than power, worth more than philanthropy, and love is worth more than pain. Now, in verses 4 through 7, he went on to describe the ways of love. Love is patient and uh, patient in abuse, patient in anger, patient in avenging, patient in adherence, and patient in adversity. Now today we're going to go further in verses uh, 4 through 7. Let's read, let's read verses 4 through 7. Now let's start at verse number 1 of 1 Corinthians 13 and we'll read down to verse number 7. Now remember uh, chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians and chapter 14 of uh, 1 Corinthians, Paul deals with the supernatural gifts of the Spirit, the nine supernatural gifts of the Spirit and how they are manifested and how they should operate in the church. And sandwiched in between these two chapters, he stated in the last verse, of, of chapter 12, but earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more perfect or more excellent way. And this is the love chapter. Let's start at verse 1. 
Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I have become sounding brass or clanging cymbals. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. All right, these, this is what we're going to deal with on today, the ways of love. And in verses 4 through 7, we're going to, uh, we may skip around a bit in these verses, but this is what we're going to focus on, verses 4 through 7 today, the ways of love. Remember, remember, this is a walk of faith. We are, we are, uh, we belong to Christ. And we're heirs of God. We're joint heirs with Christ. And everything that we receive from God, we receive it by faith. We receive it by faith, but faith works by love. Now remember, last week we, we gave a de definition of what this word love is. It is agape in the Greek. That is selfless. It is unconditional love. It is the kind of love that seeks the highest good of its object. Amen. It's not eros love. That's the kind of sensual love that a man has for his wife. It's not storge love. That's the kind of love that a parent has for their children. Uh, and it's not phileo. That's brotherly love. The kind of love that brothers and sisters in Christ have for one another. But this is agape, and agape is a noun, remember. It's a noun. But the verb form of agape is agapeo, which is love in action. It's not just, just having love in your heart for somebody, but it's actually showing the love that you have in your heart for others. Can I get an amen today? So love is, in verse number four, love is plebeian. Plebeian, I, I know y'all saying, what in the world is he talking about? That ain't in there. Well, plebeian has to do with the common people. Not proud, not arrogant, not the one percent of our society. Love is not proud, it, it's, it's humble. It takes the plebeian position. Two aspects of pride which love does not do are mentioned here. One has to do with pride and, and self, and the other with pride and others. Plebeian regarding self. Verse 4 tells us love does not parade itself. The King James translation will say it does not, or it vaunteth not itself. And this is, this is pride regarding self. Love does not brag, it doesn't boast or exalt itself. It, it, it does not parade itself. It does not uh, ostentatious. It's, it's not ostentatious, rather. Uh, it does not seek the applause of mankind. On the contrary, love seeks to give. It seeks to recognize. It seeks to honor, to applaud other, the other person. Romans chapter 12, write this verse down, and verse number 3, and then we read verse 10. It says, For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. 
Verse 10 of Romans uh, chapter number 12 says, Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. Have y'all ever known people who the only person that they talk about is themselves? I would ask this question, but I'm not. Sisters, have you ever gone out on a date with a guy and he didn't want to know nothing about you? He just wanted to tell you all about himself. I'm talking to the single sisters. <laughs> I ain't talking to you married sisters. Single ladies. You went out on a date and he didn't want to know anything about you, but he wanted to tell you everything about himself. And when it came time to pay for the meal, he didn't have no money. And, and you know what? It's not just... Guys who are like that, sometimes women are like that. They don't want to talk about nothing but themselves. Narcissistic. They don't think about themselves. They don't care nothing about you. They don't care nothing about anybody else. They only care about themselves. And, and that's all they do is they brag about what they have. And usually, usually I find that when people are like that, bragging about what they have, they don't have much. And what they do have, they just barely holding on to it. Come on, somebody. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 3 says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Why is that so hard for people to do? To give other people credit. To esteem other people as better than yourself. And we're so worried about people hating on us. And the Lord is telling us we need to be esteeming other people as being better than us. Can I get an amen? amen. Woo. All right. Let's, plebeian it, regarding society. Verse 4 also tells us love is not puffed up. Now it's pride regarding others. This is pride here regarding others again. Love is not conceited. It's not arrogant. It does not think or act as though oneself is better or above others. Love is modest and humble and recognizes and honors others. Love does not scorn the lonely. Love is willing to stand in line and wait its turn. In other words, you're not so proud and arrogant that you feel like you're entitled to what everybody else should have. When it comes to waiting in line sometimes. Preachers don't like waiting in line. Put me up to the front of the line. I'm the pastor. Everybody else been sitting up here waiting to eat too, Reverend. <laughs> well, we got to let you go first. And, and as a pastor, you need to be thinking like that. You're not the only one in there hungry. Can I get an amen? <laughs> and they didn't bless the had you bless the food. Come on, Reverend, bless. Hurry up! Don't be doing them long prayers. Go and bless the food so we can all eat. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying this for the preachers. It's time to help our preachers here. And after you finish blessing it, sometimes people want to put you to the front of the line, but you got to take into consideration all the rest of the people that's been waiting as long as you've been waiting. Can I get an amen? amen? Yeah, thank God. You're the man of God. You're the woman of God. You're the preacher. All that, that's good. That's fine. But everybody else has been waiting too. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. And now, um, and then sometimes, you know, preachers got to have a special parking place. That's, that's a common courtesy that, that, you know, churches should have. If you've got a guest speaker coming, have a parking space for your guest preacher. Can I get an amen? amen? But sometimes folk forget. So you don't walk up in the church with an attitude. Hey, <laughs> look here, man. It's July. Y'all know it's hot out here. I can't be parking way down there and walking up in here. I got to preach too. And, and walking all this heat, I can't be doing that. Where's my parking spot? Who was supposed to be watching? You don't do all that. You don't do all that. <laughs> That's arrogance. Can I get an amen? That's entitlement. No. Oh, man, I've gone places and the folk just forgot. 
And so I just go on park by wherever spot is available and walk in. Might be sweating. I have a towel with me. Come on, somebody. <laughs> All right. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew's gospel, chapter 18 and verse number four. He says, therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Did y'all get that? Whoever humbles themselves as this little child is the greatest. And then in Luke chapter 14, verse number 10, he says, but when you are invited, woo, go and sit down in the lowest place so that when he who invited you comes, he may say to you, friend, go up higher. Then you will have glory in the presence of those who sit at the table with you. Our pastor trained us that if you ever go to another church, when you go in there, just because you're a preacher, don't you automatically walk up and sit in that pulpit. You don't do that. It's better, and it's based upon this principle right here in Luke 14 and 10. It's best for you to be asked to come up than for you to be asked to go down. Looking over that, man, what, who, now who are you? I'm going to have to ask you to go on over there and sit down somewhere. Ain't nobody invited you to come up. Now some people, are, some pastors will do you like that. Y'all write down Luke chapter 22, verse 26 and and uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, and go back and look at that in your devotional time this week. Uh, love is pure, verses 5 and 6. Let me read that again. It, it does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. True love is holy love. What, what the world says is love is often nothing more than unholy lust. It has no relation to the love of this chapter. Love is pure in manners. Verse 5 tells us love does not behave rudely. It does not behave itself unseemingly, the King James puts it. Love conducts itself with the highest character. It is not vulgar or crude. Love is not unbecomingly, rudely, indecently, and disgraceful. Love does not shame oneself. Love is orderly and controlled, and it behaves and treats all persons with respect Honoring and respecting who they are. Love acts properly at all times. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Love does not behave rudely. Philippians 1, verse 9 and 10. It says, And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Don't be so easily offended. Pastor Cheryl was telling y'all she's been studying offense. Don't let people offend you so easily. Listen, we're in a time now we're in a climate now with all this stuff going on in the world with these elections and all people going to be saying a bunch of crazy stuff, going to be doing a bunch of dumb and stupid things. Don't you let people offend you. Can I get an amen? Don't let them offend you. Glory to God. Now, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse number 7. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow us for we were not disorderly among you. Don't let yourselves be disorderly. Love is pure in mind. It's pure in our mind. It thinks no evil. True love has a pure mind. And some may not, some may not do evil, but they think it. My God. 
Love does not, does, does neither. Love doesn't do evil and it doesn't think evil. Now watch this. It's, it's a difference between, between something coming into your mind and you thinking on it. Can I get an, a, an evil thought coming and that thought lingers because you cannot control necessarily what comes to your mind. Can I get an amen? Satan will always drop some stuff in your head. He probably dropped some things in your head since you've been in church this morning. You can't control that. But what you can control is once the thought falls into your head, what you do with it. Because if you allow the thought to linger in your mind, then you begin to see images. And Paul talked about casting down imaginations. Bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. You can't control what comes in your mind, but you can control what you do when it gets there. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's pure in mind. It, 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 um, love is not, um, it, it's not a mind that's filled with filth of the world. Love does not consider the wrong suffered, is not resentful, does not hold the evil done to oneself. Love suffers the evil done to it and forgives. Jesus said in Matthew's gospel chapter number 5 verse 38 and 39, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I tell you not to resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other to him also. I know some of y'all thinking, Lord, increase my faith. Just tell him, Lord, increase my love because faith works by love. <laughs> some of y'all going to be tested by this this week. There's somebody going to want to walk up and get all up in your face and make you think they're going to slap you. So here's, here's what you do. Here's what you do. Every day, I've been telling you all this for a long time. Every day, before you get out there in that public, before you go out there in that world and have to deal with sinners, sometimes some folk in your own house, pray and ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost that morning. Lord, help me today. Help me to stay in control of my emotions. Help me to stay in control of my thoughts. Help me to stay in control of my flesh. Because if you don't, if you don't, I may be easily offended, and I may say something, or I may hurt somebody. So please help me. Ask, ask him to hit, uh, fill you with the Holy Ghost. He'll do it. In Romans chapter 12, verse 17 says, Pay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. Somebody do you wrong, you don't go back and do them wrong. Amen? You don't go back and do them wrong. And, and it's so easy to slip into that if you're not careful. It's just, sometimes it's, it starts off, Brother Bozy, just something simple, something small that a person says or does to you that rubs you the wrong way. And you don't even think about it. You just get right back at them. Get right back. You say something smart too. Say something nasty too. It ain't no cuss word, but it might as well have been. Well, you said it. <laughs> Glory to God. So that's why I say, ask the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Lord, fill me. Help me. Help me to stay in control. Write down 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 8. All right? I'm sorry, 1 Peter chapter 3 and 9. I'll get to 1 Peter 4 and 8 in a minute. Uh, it, love is pure in mirth. In mirth. It, verse 6 tells us that that love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Mirth can be wicked, unrighteousness, evil, wrongdoing. Love does not take pleasure, pleasure in the unrighteousness and sin of others. It does not feed upon sin and wrong, nor does it pass along the stories of sin and wrong. Dirty jokes and clever pranks can all be evil. But love is 
pure pleasure mm -hmm. it, when it laughs. And it, it's, ho it's a holy laugh. And man's nature is too often fed the tragedy of evil, whether personal sin or natural disaster, a lot of which is seen in our daily news and on social media. We don't get into that filth like that. We don't take pleasure in all that kind of stuff. We don't rejoice in seeing this dirt and this filth that's being put out there in the world. We don't get into that like that. And you say, man, and once again, you got to be careful of what you allow to come into your head, your mind, because your eyes and your ears, your eye gate and your ear gate, Things come into your mind through those oftentimes. And if you allow that stuff to linger in your mind, it'll get down into your spirit. That's why you got to protect yourself from that. Put on the whole arm of God, the helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. So Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Aren't we so good at that? We, we're so good at looking at everybody else's fault or faults, plural, and we fail to see, like Jesus said, the big old plank that's in our own eye. And, 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 and Jesus said, you're looking at everybody else's speck, but a plank is much bigger than a speck. Your mess is a lot worse than the mess you're judging everybody else with. Can I get an amen today? And how many of y'all know it's important for us to, to take a look at ourselves? Take a look at what I'm doing wrong and, and where I need to straighten up and clean up my own stuff. Amen. I got some issues, if I would be honest with myself. Romans 15 and 1, then, uh, then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Galatians 6 and 1, brethren. If a man is overtaken in a trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. And notice he said, if the brother is overtaken in a trespass, he said, you which are spiritual. He didn't say everybody, because everybody is not spiritual. You got some folk that are carnal. And... and they know the person has been overtaken in a trespass, and so they get with them not to help them get restored, but to find out all the dirt and the details. Mm -hmm. Find out. Now, brothers, brother, what was that? Now, I, I know you done fell off, and so what's been going on with you? Uh huh. Let's pray about it. Uh -huh. Tell me, tell me, tell me what's going on, brother. And I just want to get with you and pray with you that the Lord restores you. Uh -huh. And sometimes you got to be careful. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. Folk wanna, sometimes folks just want to get all in your business so they can go tell everybody else. Now, remember, this is between you and I. It's, just, it's, between, it's between us. And I'm kind of I'm kind of suspicious when folk tell me that. If it were, why did you even say that? I ain't going to tell nobody. I ain't going to tell. Don't worry. Your secret is good with me. Glory to God. <laughs> it's, about, it, it's good for about five minutes. When they can get their phone out and, and text your secret to the person, you know, that put them up to go and ask you about what's going on with you. So you, so you who are spiritual... Once again, everybody is not spiritual, and you have to be, you have to be careful and, and discerning about who you share with what's going on with you. Everybody can't hold water on their stomach. 
They can't. You who are spiritual. Now write down 1 Peter 4 and 8. Love is polite. Let's look at verse 4, verse 5, and verse 7. I'm going to read it again. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Uh, lo love does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Uh, thinks no evil. Verse 7, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love is polite. This is related to love being pure. It is love towards others. It is love's action toward others. This is what I was telling you about agap agapeo, the verb. It's polite in action. Love is kind. Someone once said, you can uh, no more love without kindness than you can have springtime without flowers. Love is not rude. It's not mean. It's not vindictive. It's, it, it knows how to say please. It knows how to say thank you. And how to be courteous. It's helpful. It's useful. It's giving, showing, and showering favors. Y'all remember when we were growing up, our parents taught us how to speak to people, how to have manners when you walk in the room, open your mouth and speak to the folk. Somebody did something nice for you. You tell them what? Thank you. Say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, no, sir, no, ma'am. What happened? What happened? Sometimes you can't even get these children to open their mouths and say anything. You speak to them, and they won't even say nothing to you. And then you have the audacity, the unmitigated gall to say, well, he just, my baby having a bad day. Now, when we was kids, we didn't get to have bad days. Yeah, it got a whole lot worse. If you had that kind of attitude with grown folks, your day was about to get worse. And they wasn't going to wait till you get home. Wherever you were, it was fixing to get worse right there. <laughs> Glory to God. You think you're having a bad day, I'm going to show you a bad day. <laughs> Glory to God. Manners. But you know, it's, it's bad when children don't have manners, but it's worse when grown folk don't have none. Oh, with a God, man, open your mouth and say something. Be nice. Don't y'all sing a song? Open your mouth and say something. <laughs> Romans chapter 12 and verse 10 says, Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. I think I read that earlier. Ephesians 4.32. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving one another. Just as Christ, just as in Christ, brother, God forgave you. So love is, is, is it's polite in attitude. Love does not envy. It does not envy. Love is not jealous, does not have feelings against others because of what they have, such as gifts, positions, friends, recognition, possessions, popularity, abilities. Love does not begrudge or attack others or downplay the abilities and successes of others. Love shares and joys and rejoices in the experiences and good of others. Galatians 6 or 5, brother, in 26 says, Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Psalms 37 and 1, does not, do not, brother, Fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. Uh, uh, Proverbs 14 and 30. A sound heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. It's rottenness to the bone. And it's sad when you, you see people who are supposed to be saved so envious. Somebody else gets blessed, 
They'll have nothing good to say about them. I wonder what they had to do to get that. They can't afford that. I know where they work. <laughs> you don't know everybody's business. You don't know how much people get paid. Can I get an amen? Uh, yeah, yeah. Everybody don't have to sleep their way to the top. Some people just have a good work ethic. And some people went and got their education and they got promoted because of these things. Can I get an amen? Everybody don't have to do all that. You don't have to hate on everybody just because God is blessing them. If you be happy for somebody else but because God is blessing them, God will bless you when it's your season. Can I get an amen up in here? Jeez. Be happy for other folk. And, and what really blesses me is when I see God blessing other folk, it just lets you know God is still blessing. And at some point or another, my blessing is coming. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen today? All right. So, so you know, I, and I think I told y'all, if, if not last Sunday, maybe a couple of other Sundays. It may have been last Sunday. It really irks me when I see other preachers on TV, on Facebook, on uh, YouTube, and their whole message is rebuking and bringing other preachers down. And usually, the preacher that they're trying to bring down, that preacher's ministry is much bigger than theirs. And at the root of all of that is envy and jealousy because their church is bigger. They got more influence. They ain't preaching nothing over there. Preaching all that old mess. That's false doctrine. <laughs> they liar. False prophets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just mad because that man gives more, he gives more attention than you do. His church is bigger than yours. Just going to be honest about it. And you, you spend your whole message, the whole message, preaching mess. You're trying to discredit other preachers. And you're not even giving the people that's sitting in front of you the word of God that's going to help their lives. He ain't preaching nothing over there. <laughs> Sick of all these lying preachers. Driving these big cars and wearing them fancy suits. <laughs> yeah. I got on fancy suit himself. Amen. Love is polite in accent. Verse 5 tells us love does not seek its own. Love uh, places a, a scent on others, not self. Love is not selfish. Love does not focus upon who one is nor upon what one has done. Love seeks to serve, not to have others to serve oneself. Love is acknowledging others. Not insisting others acknowledge oneself. It is giving to others. Not insisting that others give to oneself. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 24 says, Let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. Philippians 2 and 4, Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of of others. Come on, somebody. Polite in accusations. But uh -huh, verse number seven says, believes all things. Love does not bring accusation against someone until the facts are known. True love is not quick to condemn. This does not mean that love is blind and that it is easily deceived. It is entirely alien to the spirit of, of the cynic and the pessimist, the anonymous uh, slanderer, the secret dictator or detractor. I'm sorry. Love is always eager to believe the best, ever ready to believe the best. 
Love sees and understands the circumstances and accepts and forgives and believes the very best about a person. Luke 17 and 4 says, And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. My God. Write down Ephesians 4.32 and Colossians 3.13. Preachers sometimes, and not just preachers but other people, are so quick to get on social media and repeat things that they have heard that they heard. They don't have first-hand information. Uh Things that they heard about somebody else. And they're so quick to get on social media and and condemn people. And murder their reputation. They're so quick to do that. They love doing that kind of stuff. And you don't even know. You don't even know whether this person actually did all that stuff or not. And here's the thing you got to remember. People can use AI and put you over here with this group of folk you ain't never met in your life. And post all that out there on you. And make you look like you're evil and wicked and immoral. And that's why you got to be careful about getting this secondhand information and running with it, tail bearing. Running with stuff. You don't know what people are doing out there. A whole lot of people are saved, living a clean life, helping people, empowering people, and here you are ready to tear them down just because you get a hold of some secondhand information from messy folk out there on YouTube and, and Facebook. Messy folk. It's a messy folk out there. Y'all won't believe, whether you believe it or not, it's a messy people out there. And always remember, I told you this on last week, be not deceived, God is not mocked, whatsoever man sows, that also shall he reap, and if you keep putting mess out on folk, I guarantee you at some point somebody going to be putting some mess out on you. And the mess may not even be true, but it's out there, and people would rather believe a lie than believe the truth. Let me close. Let me read verse 4 through 7 again as I close. Verse 4 through 7, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. I'm closing with this. Our society confuses love and lust. And unlike lust, God's kind of love is directed outward toward others, not inward toward ourselves. That does not mean that we're not to love ourselves. Jesus said that the second greatest commandment after loving God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and strength, that we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. And we cannot love our neighbors, unless we do love ourselves. Matthew 22, 37 and 40 tells us that. This kind of love, though, goes against our natural inclination. It's impossible to have this kind of love of, uh, unless God helps us set aside our own natural desire, desires so that we can love without expecting anything in return. We can't manufacture this kind of love when we don't feel it. Uh huh. We, we, we gain it through the Holy Spirit. Paul wrote in Romans chapter 5 and verse number 5, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Did, did you get that right there? 
So this love that Paul is talking about in 1 Corinthians 13, agape love, this kind of love has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So you have this love in you. You have it in you. It's, it's, not, it, it's not impossible for you in the power of the Holy Ghost to love people. It is impossible if you try to do it on your own. So you have the ability to love unconditionally, selflessly. We, we, we never love perfectly. Only Jesus can. Thus, the more we become like Christ, the more we will show love to others. The gifts of the Spirit uh, manifest the love of God in particular situations within the community of faith. For Paul, as for John, love is the defining characteristic of God's presence among his people. Therefore, it should be the defining characteristic of God's people amongst ourselves. First John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, uh-huh, and then verse 11, then verse 20 and 21 says, Beloved, let us love one another. For God is love, and everyone who loves is born of God. And knows God. He who does not love God or he who does not, does not love does not know God. For God is love. Verse number 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Verse 20 and 21. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this is the commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Can I tell you something real quickly? Your brother and your sister doesn't look just like you all the time. So you got to get beyond just, I love my own. I love my own too, but I, I love my white brothers. I love my Hispanic brothers and sisters. I love my Indian uh, brothers and sisters. Asian, I love, listen, love doesn't see color like that. Can I get an amen? Amen. If you have the love of God in your heart, then you cannot love just your own. 1 John 5, 1 through 3 says, Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Mm. And his commandments are not burdensome. John chapter 13 verse 35. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. John 14, 23 and 24, Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words and the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. Remember, faith works by love. If you're going to walk in the blessings of Abraham, it's a faith walk. But none of it is going to work if it's not by love. Can we stand to our feet? Somebody get the children and tell them it's time for us to pray for them. Let's stand to our feet. Anybody want to join the church? Come on down to the front. Faith works by love. Faith works by love. 
This love is not a fleshly, sensual love. It's spiritual. This love that we have for others is not an emotional love. It's spiritual. Because some people make it hard for you to love them. Some people make it hard for you to love them. There's a song. I, I, I ain't asking y'all to sing it. I ain't asking y'all to sing it because I'll be to mess y'all up. But there's a song that says, so easy to love you. So easy to love you. Because you're wonderful. Y'all remember that song? Now, who is it talking about? Jesus, right? It's easy to love Jesus. But, but John says, if I can't love y'all, <laughs> I don't really love him. Can I get an amen? amen? So I need to make sure that my love for you, my love for the brethren and the sisters, make sure that's right. Make sure that's correct. Because when I get that piece right, then my love walk with God will be right. And when it's right with God, then the blessings of Abraham flows. When it's wrong with you, the blessings can't flow. Because when it's wrong with you, then it's not right with God. So when it's right with you, then it's right with God. And the blessings can flow. Do you hear me? You understand what I'm saying? Let's get it right. Come on, let's worship God. Bring the children in. Bring the children in so we can pray for them today. Anybody want to join the church? Come on down to the front.